Hello everybody. In this video, I will introduce a totally different topic with my last two videos talking about game theory lane changing models. To better describe how drivers concerned about their safety, we develop an injury severity function based on the energy loss. The term severity in the traffic safety literature may refer to the probability, the probability of crashes, the damage magnitude, or both of them. The degree of crash harm depends on the relationship between physical injuries and crash mechanism. But understanding is often limited by complicated crash mechanics. So there's a still a debate on how to translate crashes into injuries. Previous studies prefer to use delta V for the measurement of vehicular crash severity for several decades. Delta V is computed by the difference between pre and post collided speeds. It is a kind of vector including modulus and direction. The fundamental mechanical me meaning of delta V is related to the forces that occupants receive inside of the crashing vehicles. In reaction to the imposed force after the collision, occupants strike the surfaces in the front of the vehicle, which is the main reason for injuries in most of the cases. However, the recent application of Delta V depends on four crash modes, front, near side, far side, and rear, which may not be comparable so that different directions yield different conclusions. In addition, Delta V fails to consider the influence of long crash paths on injury. So we may, we may need another in indicator to overcome these drawbacks. Previous injury severity studies typically establish the statistical relationship between the dependent variable, injury severity index, and the several independent variables. This table summarizes severity index crash indicators and regression models they used in previous automobile crash severity studies. For the method used in this paper, the data we apply is uh, from the National Automotive Sampling System and Crash Versus data system collected across the US. It aims to produce statistical uh, relationships between biomedical and engineering evidence in police reported automobile crash investigation. For the injury evaluation, we use maximum abbreviated injury score ranged from 0 to 6 plus. The distribution of this da data set is shown here. 0 represents property damage only, and 6 plus represents fatality cases. In this study, we consider how occupants get injured from the perspective of energy. In typical two vehicle crashes, the destructive energy is dissipated first in the deformation of designed protective structures and second in decelerating the uncrashed structures. Occupants then retain their forward motion due to the, the urgent deceleration and finally collide with the front sur surface of vehicles or are restrained by safety belts. So we want to establish the relationship between energy absorption and injury severity. According to energy and momentum conservation equations, when assuming it is kind of inelastic crash, 
the energy loss can be calculated by this formula. Then, we assume the energy is absorbed based on the mass ratio of two vehicles and also introduce a factor to reveal this effect. The energy absorption will be estimated from two directions, longitudinal and lateral, with two different factors, alpha. We further compare our new LRISC model to the conventional delta V model by proportional odds or the logistic regression model and random forest machine learning model to check the performance of the Elvis model. From the results, we found that the values of alpha with a minimum residual deviance are negative 0.8 for head-on and rear-end crashes and negative 5 for side impact crashes. The values are both negative, which means the heavy vehicles take more advantages in crashes. Occupants in heavy vehicles suffer less significant injuries. At the same time, this effect is more significant in side impact crashes rather than straight line crashes, which means light vehicles are more fragile in their side structures. We also found besides the energy loss, the number of occupants is also statistically significant. The high vehicle occupancy increases likelihood that some of the occupants are seriously injured. We further compare two models in both regression and machine learning algorithms. In most of the uh, situations, our Elvis model performs better than the Delta V model. In regression, the Elvis model has a lower AIC compared to Delta V, while in machine learning models, the Elvis model gets a higher prediction accuracy by the random forest algorithm. To conclude, the new proposed Elvis model can be used to predict injury severity in specific crashes. From the results, lighter vehicles generally suffer more from the crashes. The protective effect reflects that heavier vehicles have better design structures, which may lead to the bullying phenomenon that people prefer to buy heavy vehicles. This effect is more significant in the lateral direction that suggests car manufacturers to focus more on the design of lateral structures for compact cars to reinforce the lateral protections for them. Future research could extend the model by studying more crashes with different collision angles and establishing the relationships between crash types and their respective alpha values. It may also depend on whether fragile or weak structures of vehicles receive the crash impact. Other factors that significantly influence, influence the energy absorption by vehicles are also expected to improve estimation outcomes. Extensions to consider elastic collisions and restitution coefficients may provide additional useful insights for realistic crash studies. Thank you for watching this video. In the next video, I will introduce in detail about machine learning models to predict injury severity. Thank you.